Musk admits Mars 2026 is impossible, then orders five starships to launch anyway. Five massive rockets. One 26-month window. Zero room for failure. SpaceX engineers are working around the clock on a mission their own CEO calls impossible. Heat shields untested for Mars entry. Fuel systems never proven in deep space. Landing tech that's failed before. But here's the shocking part. Musk isn't crazy. There's a hidden reason he's risking everything on this impossible timeline. What does he know that we don't? Let's dive right in. The shocking truth behind Musk's impossible statement. The room went silent when Musk said it. Mars 2026? Impossible. But then he did something that stunned everyone. He ordered five starships to launch anyway. This wasn't just another Musk announcement, this was different. The man who revolutionized rockets, who made reusable boosters reality, who changed space forever, admitted his own deadline couldn't be met. Yet SpaceX engineers are working around the clock. Building, testing, racing against time, they don't have. Why would someone deliberately chase failure? The answer reveals a strategy so bold, it's either genius or madness. The secret race, nobody sees coming. While the world watches SpaceX build starships, something terrifying is happening behind the scenes. China isn't just planning Mars missions, they're accelerating them. Their Mars sample return mission, originally scheduled for 2030, now targeting early 2030s. NASA's pushing commercial partnerships harder than ever. The space race isn't just heating up, it's about to explode. And Musk knows what others don't. The first nation to establish Mars infrastructure doesn't just win bragging rights. They control the future of human civilization. Water rights on Mars, mining claims, the foundation of interplanetary power. Think about this. Whoever lands first, stays first. And that reshapes everything about Earth's future. But here's where it gets really interesting. Musk isn't just racing other countries. He's racing against something far more dangerous, his own timeline. The technical nightmare SpaceX faces five starships to Mars sounds simple. The reality is absolutely brutal. Each Mars-bound starship needs multiple refueling flights. That's 20 to 25 launches in just six months. The math is staggering. Current Starship has never completed full orbital refueling, not once. They're betting everything on technology that's never been proven. The heat shield situation is even worse. Those black ceramic tiles protecting Starship during re-entry? They've never faced seven months in deep space. Cosmic radiation bombarding them constantly. Micrometeorites hitting at 45,000 miles per hour. Temperature swings from minus 250 degrees to plus 250 degrees. Mars entry is a nightmare scenario. Earth's atmosphere is thick and forgiving. Mars' atmosphere is paper-thin, but still dense enough to create massive heat during landing. It's like threading a needle while falling off a cliff in the dark. During an earthquake, one mistake, game over. But Musk is betting everything on Starship V3. And that's where things get really crazy. The V3 gamble that could change everything. Starship V3 isn't just an upgrade, it's a complete redesign, larger structure, Brand new Raptor engines. Systems never tested in space. Normal aerospace companies take five to seven years validating new technology. SpaceX has 18 months. The new Raptor engines promise massive leaps in efficiency. But efficiency means nothing if they explode during the seven-month Mars journey. These engines have never fired continuously for longer than a few minutes. Here's the brutal reality. SpaceX needs flawless performance on technologies they're still developing. One engine failure during Mars transit, mission over. Heat shield failure during Mars entry, explosion on impact. The stakes couldn't be higher, yet Musk doubled down on this impossible timeline. What does he know that we don't? The infrastructure secret that changes everything. Those modest 10-ton payloads for 2026 missions? Everyone thinks it's because of technical limitations. The truth is far more strategic. Those 10 tons aren't random cargo. They're the foundation of something unprecedented. Solar arrays for power generation, communication equipment for Earth contact, and most importantly, the Optimus robots. 
These aren't just construction workers, they're Mars's first colonists. While humans need oxygen, food, sleep, and protection from radiation, Optimus robots thrive in conditions that would kill us instantly. They can work during Martian dust storms. They can operate in the thin atmosphere without spacesuits. They can survive the seven-month journey without life support. By the time humans arrive on Mars, robots will have already built their cities. But this creates a disturbing question. Who really controls Mars? The humans who fund the missions or the robots who build the infrastructure? The 2028 explosion nobody saw coming. If 2026 succeeds, 2028 becomes the launch pad for something unprecedented. Not five starships, 20 starships, each carrying 75 tons of cargo. Do the math, that's 1,500 tons of equipment in a single launch window, enough to build actual bases, fuel production facilities, landing pads for even larger ships. But the real shot comes in 2030 to 2031. 100 starships, 150 tons each. That's 15,000 tons of cargo, the equivalent of building a small city on Mars in just two years. And by 2033, Musk's presentation revealed something nobody expected. 500 starships, 300 tons each. That's 150,000 tons of cargo. The population of entire Earth cities could relocate to Mars. This isn't exploration anymore. This is migration. But here's the twist that changes everything. The Optimus Revolution Mars doesn't see coming. Most people miss the real significance of Optimus robots heading to Mars. They're not just the advanced construction crew, they're the beta test for Mars civilization. While humans struggle with radiation poisoning, psychological isolation, and the constant threat of equipment failure, Optimus robots are immune to Mars's deadly environment. They can work outside during dust storms that would kill humans in minutes. They can survive temperature extremes that would freeze human blood solid. They can work 24 hours a day, seven days a week, for years without maintenance. By 2030, when the first humans land on Mars, they won't be pioneers. They'll be tourists visiting a world already built by robots. But this raises a terrifying question. When robots build the infrastructure, produce the food, and maintain the life support systems, what happens to human independence? The engineering reality check nobody wants to face. Let's be brutally honest about what SpaceX must accomplish in 18 months. Flight 10 must demonstrate perfect booster recovery. No explosions, no ocean crashes. The Mechazilla arms must catch a 200-foot rocket traveling hundreds of miles per hour. They've attempted this exactly never. The ship stage must prove orbital refueling actually works. Not just fuel transfer, but stable, repeatable refueling of massive spacecraft. The margin for error is zero. Heat shield durability must survive multiple test flights. Those ceramic tiles must prove they can handle deep space conditions, Mars atmospheric entry, and potential return journeys. Engine reignition in space must work flawlessly every single time. Mars missions get exactly one chance at course corrections. Any single failure kills the 2026 timeline. Every SpaceX engineer knows this. Every test flight carries the weight of human destiny. And Musk, he's betting everything on 18 months of perfect execution. The infrastructure sprint, that's actually insane. While starships grab headlines, the real action happens on the ground. SpaceX is constructing new launch pads in Florida, upgrading Starbase facilities, building massive Gigabay factories for rapid vehicle assembly. The goal? Launch one Mars-bound starship per month starting mid-2026. That requires treating rockets like cars instead of spacecraft. Current starship production, maybe one vehicle per month. Required production for Mars missions, five flight-ready vehicles plus multiple tankers. In six months, the logistics are staggering. The timeline is impossible. The financial risk could bankrupt most companies. Yet SpaceX is pushing forward, full speed, no backup plan. Unless Musk has already solved the impossible problems in secret. The secret nobody's talking about. Here's what changes everything. SpaceX has a history of revealing successful tests only after they work. Secret engine tests, undisclosed hardware trials, 
internal milestones nobody hears about until they're already achieved. What if Starship V3 is already more advanced than anyone knows? What if orbital refueling has been tested successfully in private? What if the heat shield problems were solved months ago? What if calling the 2026 mission impossible is psychological warfare against the competition? Think about it. While China and NASA debate timelines and budgets, SpaceX engineers are building the future in secret. When competitors think something is impossible, they stop trying. But when you're the only one attempting the impossible, you win by default. The moment that defines human destiny. The next 18 months will determine whether humans become an interplanetary species or remain trapped on Earth while others claim the stars. If SpaceX succeeds, Mars becomes humanity's second home. If they fail, we wait another two years while competitors catch up. But here's the real question. Is Musk really chasing an impossible deadline? Or has he already achieved the impossible and is just waiting for the right moment to reveal it? The man who made rockets land themselves, who revolutionized space travel, who turned science fiction into reality, doesn't chase impossible dreams. He makes them inevitable. And that's exactly what makes Mars 2026 so terrifying and so exciting. Emotional hook opening. Blue Origin just realized they can't beat SpaceX, but it's too late. After burning $3.5 billion over 13 years, their new Glenn rocket crashed on its first landing. Here's the kicker. Amazon had to pay SpaceX to launch their own satellites because Blue Origin couldn't deliver. SpaceX charges $60 million per launch, while New Glenn costs $110 million. Why did Jeff Bezos wait so long to face reality? And what does this mean for the future of space exploration? Let's dive right in. The $3.5 billion space disaster, how Blue Origin finally realized they lost. The timeline reveals everything. In 2012, Jeff Bezos announced his grand vision for New Glenn while SpaceX was still struggling with basic rocket landings. Fast forward to 2025. SpaceX dominates the global launch market and Blue Origin just watched their flagship rocket crash on its first attempt. But this isn't just about one failed launch. This is the story of how unlimited money can't buy you what matters most in the space race. The dream that became Blue Origin's curse. Picture this. The world's second richest man decides to build the perfect rocket. Not just any rocket, but one that would make SpaceX look like amateurs. New Glenn would have a massive 7-meter fairing, double the cargo space of Falcon 9. Reusable engines designed for 25 flights. Clean methane fuel instead of dirty kerosene. On paper, it was revolutionary. In reality, it became the most expensive lesson in modern aerospace history. While Bezos was perfecting his masterpiece, Elon Musk was launching paying customers into space. Real missions, real revenue, real progress. The irony hits hard when you realize that Blue Origin's perfectionism became their greatest weakness. The engine nightmare that changed everything. Seven B4 engines power New Glenn's first stage. Each one generates 550,000 pounds of thrust. That at 20 short feet, you did receive a miles of 550,000 pounds of thrust. That's like attaching seven freight trains to the bottom of your rocket. Impressive? Absolutely. Working? That's where things get ugly. Engine testing began in 2014, but the BE-4s kept failing in spectacular ways. Explosions during startup. Overheating during burn. Turbo pump failures that stumped veteran engineers. Meanwhile, SpaceX's simpler Merlin engine were reliably flying customers to orbit. Here's the devastating part. United Launch Alliance was also waiting for these same BE-4 engines for their Vulcan rocket. So Blue Origin's engine problems didn't just delay New Glenn. They delayed their paying customers too. But why would a company with unlimited funding struggle with something SpaceX had already mastered? The answer exposes a fundamental flaw that would doom Blue Origin from the start. Two philosophies, one winner. 
SpaceX embraces fail fast, learn faster. Build it, fly it, watch it explode, learn from the wreckage, and build it better. Brutal? Yes. Effective? The results speak for themselves. Blue Origin chose step-by-step -step ferociously, perfect every component before testing, analyze every failure for months, never rush, never compromise. This sounds logical until you see the results. SpaceX flew Falcon 1 four times, failed three times, but learned enough to create Falcon 9, which became the most successful rocket in history. Blue Origin spent those same years perfecting engines that still weren't ready when SpaceX was already dominating the market. The philosophical difference cost Blue Origin everything. By the time they were ready for their first test flight, SpaceX had captured 60% of the global launch market. But the real shock was still coming. The billion-dollar monument